What's the best career in the healthcare field in 2023? If you're a student who's trying to get into a healthcare career and choose in 2023 the career that determines the rest of your life, in this video, we are going to cover all things in the healthcare field that require from a high school diploma all the way to a doctorate degree. So wherever you are in that journey, in this video, we're gonna cover the top careers in the healthcare field in 2023. Also, as a bonus, if y'all into exercise and wellness and all of that, which job or career is gonna be the best in 2023? Whether that is something related to kinesiology, physical therapy, anything of that region, Woo! We're gonna talk about that in this video. I can't wait to get started. Let's freaking go. What's up everyone? My name is Dr. Justin Lee, physical therapist. I help students get accepted into physical therapy school, but in this video, we're gonna talk all about careers in the healthcare field. So let's go ahead and start with number one. So I just wanna let you know that these healthcare careers are ranked by US News. Woo. Now some careers I thought were gonna be up top and <laughs> they were actually not. And some careers I was like, what? These are actually one amongst the top careers in this field? That's super interesting. So I got curious and thought, how are these careers ranked? So let me tell you about what metrics they used and how they rank them. So they use number one, median salary as a big one. Number two, unemployment. Number three and four are the 10 year growth rate. Number five, the likelihood of landing a job. Number six, stress level. And number seven, work life balance. Now, something to understand is that they did not take into consideration tuition right? Cost of tuition and schooling and how long schooling is. Now, I know some of you are, that's really important because you want to try to land a job as quickly as possible. <laughs> but this ranking system did not take that into account. So just keep that in mind as we roll through the punches. All right, we are going to start with, start with number one and in the category that requires at least a bachelor's or greater okay so we're gonna talk about that first and then we're gonna talk about some assistant jobs and and, and uh, jobs that require not as much of a higher education okay so let's get started with the list number one is gonna be a nurse practitioner Woo! nurse practitioners US US news ranked nurse practitioners as number one just want to let you know about their median salary and uh, their education level I think this is really good information because you get a lot of money they're projecting that you get at least 120 K per year and their education required is a master's degree so you got to do your bachelor's master's boom take your exam ha you are a nurse practitioner number two physician's assistant same situation here you they have a median salary of about hundred and twenty one thousand dollars and a master's degree as well bachelor's to master's now I know you're thinking wait nurse practitioner physician assistant what's the difference that's a video maybe for a different time but really quick the two major differences they pretty much do the same thing but it's more of their philosophy and their approach so a physician a nurse practitioner does more their approach is more of a patient centered approach and a physician assistant is more of a diagnostic centered approach so what does that mean patient centered approach is more like hey you have this disease and, but that's related around the patient, right? The patient and this disease. A physician assistant is, hey, you have this disease and the patient is related around that. So the focal point is a little bit different. Some of you have more of a uh, holistic patient-centered, how does this affect a person's quality of life point of view versus a uh, diagnostic, hey, I'm more interested in this disease point of view. So that's kind of the approaches of those. I spent way too much time talking about that. Let's move on to number three. Ooh, let's go, baby. Number three, that's what this channel is all about is, yep, you guessed it, physical therapist. Ha <laughs> ha. Number three, baby. Physical therapist ranks in number three. Thank you, US News. I do appreciate that. 
They do have a median salary of $95,000 and the job, the, the degree that's required is a DPT, so a doctorate in physical therapy. Let's move on to number four, which is a dentist. A dentist will make $160,000 a year and they do require a doctorate degree as well. So you gotta do way more schooling um, beyond your bachelor's. Number five is going to be a veterinarian. A vet, right? Uh, they have about an average salary of $100,000 and they do require a doctorate degree as well. So physician is going to be ranked number six six doctor physician same thing right so of course you know your doctor's going to make a lot of money here they're making at least two hundred thousand dollars two hundred and eight is the median salary um, that they were um, labeled as and then of course you have med school doctor school and beyond tons of schooling for this profession number seven is going to be orthodontist ah you got stuff going on in your teeth Okay, orthodontist is gonna be number seven, $208,000 for this one as well. And then you do get a, uh, you do need a doctorate salary for this. Now I just wanna pause really quick and just emphasize, hmm, I might, there might be something to say that two jobs that require the mouth and teeth are in the top 10 in 2023. Why is that? What's going on there? Something to think about. Okay, lastly, you know, we can't forget the healthcare field without our guns, our army, the people who are in the front line doing the job that's like crazy and hard to do and mad respect for them is going to be registered nurses. Now, yes, you can get you can get a you can be a registered nurse initially with an associate's degree, but now more and more, especially if you want to grow, you're going to need to get that bachelor's. Some even have that master's or even a doctorate. But the lowest level of entry is definitely going to be an associate's degree, which is pretty cool. You make $77,000 a year, especially now during COVID. You can, I heard, I heard nurses are making more than six figures uh, just because of the demand that's needed in healthcare right now in the in hospitals. So <laughs> if you want to become a nurse and make some money, now is the time to do that. All right, so that's going to conclude our top list for a bachelor's or doctorate and above. So now let's look at jobs, the top jobs that require not as much of a, of a degree. All right, so most of these careers require an associate's or a high school degree. Woo, man, so those of you who are watching can get into this right away. And if you're trying to get into a doctorate program, these are great professions to start off at, make some money, get some experience, use that experience, write in your essays and your interviews for a doctorate level program. So just keep that in mind. You're welcome. All right, here we go. Number one is going to be an occupational therapy assistant. Dent. Crazy. OT is going to be in the uh, definitely is a growing profession. I was very shocked that they were not within the top eight here that I just mentioned earlier. Um, but hey, I'm not the one breaking these systems. <laughs> but occupational therapy assistant is going to come off with $61,000 a year and you do just require an associate's degree for that. Number two is a dental hygienist. That's going to give you $77,000 a year here, and you do require just an associate's for that. Hmm. Again, teeth, what's going on here? Hey, maybe there's a rise, maybe there's a trend. I'm just stating the facts. Okay, number three. <laughs> We're ranking three and three on both lists here. Physical therapy assistant. You're going to be making $61,000 a year, and you do require an associate's for that degree. Number four, I was pretty shocked with this one, is going to be a medical records technician. Someone who's in charge of records, there's a lot of patients and you need to file all of that organization. This one ranked number four. So you're making $46,000 a year. It requires a post-secondary non-degree, meaning like a certification. So you don't need to go through a ton of schooling for this and you can make some pretty good money. Like, like I mentioned, work-life balance, I can see how this one is pretty low stress, right? You're just, you're just doing your thing, getting your, getting your money in, That's right? Here we go, number five, vet tech. You're going to be making $36,000. It requires an associate's degree. 
Mm, this is cool. I think that for the money and for make, going through an associate's degree, you can pretty much be making double for another career path. So um, that's just my opinion. Okay, number six is going to be a diagnostic medical sonographer. You know, those of you who have babies or got pregnant, they're like, it's a girl. It's a boy. Well, they can't really lift the leg up. But hey, those are the techs, right? They're the ones who do that. It's obviously not a doctor who's going to be labeling that. Um, this is a diagnostic medical sonographer who is doing that job for you. So they make $77,000 a year. They work in the hospital. It requires an associate's degree. They get a lot of great benefits for doing this. Something to get into. And lastly, number seven and eight, this is a tie for this one, is a home health aid and a personal care aid. Both of them making about $29,000 a year. You only require a, it's only required a high school diploma for this. Now I've worked with students to get into PT school who have done this job and use this job as a great way to leverage their experiences and to help them stand out to get into PT school. Whew. Only requires a high school diploma. Okay, lastly, I did mention as a bonus in this video, we're gonna talk about some jobs um, in the exercise and the wellness field. So let's get into that right now. Now, the Bureau and Labor Statistics just posted this a couple months ago, and I wanted to just emphasize some jobs and some trends that I think is going to be a pivotal information for you. So just keep in mind that this is going to be jobs that are in the exercise wellness field. It's no longer really healthcare in general. Now, some jobs are gonna be in healthcare, but um, yeah, just wanted to emphasize and uh, remind you of that. Okay, number one, woo, is gonna be physical therapy assistance. I already mentioned to you about how much salary that they make, but I think something to emphasize here is their, is their growth. They have a 26 percentage growth outlook in the next 10 years. 26%, that means there's gonna be so many more PTAs out there that are gonna have jobs, that are gonna have a uh, sustainable living, and it only requires two years of a, a two years of education for this. So something to definitely understand and recognize if you don't wanna go the whole DPT route, PTA is pretty good as well. We'll talk about what I think about PTA and DBT in 2023. Later on, I'm gonna make a video about that, but hey, if you're into that and you don't have a bachelor's, you're in high school or you're in community college, you wanna get started with that, go for it. I think that's an awesome choice. Number two, where the rank, the, the growth percentage actually goes down on this. So massage therapists are at 20% growth rate here. Now massage therapists, you don't require a degree for this, maybe more of a certification. You could just do like a weekend school for a couple weeks and boom, you're a massage therapist. Pretty low level job, low, low stress level job, working on people. I'm sure you've got massages before, some good, some not so good. Uh, but definitely a lot of money can be made here, especially if you go in your own private world, right, and getting um, cash or anything like that. Um, as far as what was reported, they do make $46,000 a year. So definitely a job that is sustainable. Okay, number three is gonna be an exercise trainer, group fitness instructor, personal trainer, fitness coach, whatever you may call it. Growth outlook, 19%, making about $40,000 a year. Now, this is an average as, a, as someone who's been in the personal training world for over 10 years now. Um, definitely have potential to make way more than that. If you go on your own route and not, um, not through a gym, you're private, you can make way more money, you can have less stress, and you're in control of your own schedule. I personally think if you can do semi-private, those of you who are personal trainers now, if you can do semi-private at least two, three, four people at a time, that's two, three, four times the amount per hour per person. That's a lot of money. Just saying. So yeah, and I honestly think there's a lot of growth in these areas because hey, our baby boomers are getting older and they are getting brittle and they need to get stronger and they understand that, right? So um, definitely a lot of growth here. Okay, number four and five, I just wanna emphasize and we're gonna stop here, is going to be 
physical therapists and athletic trainers with a growth outlook of 17%. Now, physical therapists will make $95,000 a year, $95,000 a year, and then athletic trainers report it at $48,000 a year. Um, I made a video between per physical therapists and athletic trainers, what's the difference and all that kind of stuff. From my experience and from what other people have told me, they, the folks that go into athletic training think that they're gonna work with athletes and do all those great things and work in pro, and then they realize, wow, this is a lot of work, and the potential of getting into the pro area is uh, very slim, <laughs> um, and they actually regret their decision and wish they went into DPT. But hey, those are the folks that just told me that information could be very different for other people. Woo, that was a mouthful. Now in 2023, these are the jobs that are gonna be the most relevant in the health care field. Now, if you're trying to get into this field because of one, sustainability, security, right? <sighs> Pandemic or anything crazy happens, these jobs are always gonna be in need, if not in higher demand. There are jobs that artificial intelligence, AI can definitely take over but there are other jobs that always require a human mind, compassion, kindness, and those different emotional characteristics that make the job really good. So I hope this video was really helpful to help you understand and pick and choose what's gonna be required of you. I definitely would recommend that you search a little bit deeper as to which career is gonna be, first sounds good to you, then research a little bit deeper as far as which one you really wanna get into. But I hope this video gave you a good broad outlook as to which healthcare career jobs in the healthcare related field are gonna be best in 2023. If you found this video helpful, I really appreciate it if you give a subscription, like this video, and if you have any questions, comment below. All right, everyone, have a great day. Have a great one, you guys.